the Asian American community of the greater Washington metropolitan area. I hail from Fairfax, Virginia, and I'm here, I'm very pleased to be here in the company of uh, three young um, members of the Haitian American community, some of them born here, and most of them actually born here. And uh, we, this is being retransmitted live by the Radio Tele Solidarity in New York, Long Island, and elsewhere in the United States and um, Haiti and Japan, I believe. And I'm very pleased to introduce to, to my left Stephanie Bourbon, Sophia Fenton, and Bertrand Bruno. We will start again with uh, Stephanie Bourbon. Stephanie, would you please introduce yourself and tell us um, where you were born and uh, what you do in life and uh, uh, what your projects are, what your challenges are, and what life in the United States means to you, and also um, what the Haitian influence in your life has been so far. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, I'm Stephanie Bonbon. I am currently a great management specialist for the Department of State. Um, I was born in Haiti um, and grew up there, moved here when I was 13 to New York City and had, went to undergrad in Boston, lived a little bit in Florida and went back to Haiti after the earthquake to work. Uh, I started working with an implementing partner for USAID and as well as a local hospital in Haiti with Pro, um, Project Medishare with University of Miami, a project we had there. And I found myself back to D.C. for a job. I've been here for the past four years. Sophia? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, my name is Sophia Fenton. I was born here in Maryland. I'm a student at the University of Maryland. I'm in my senior year as a public policy major with a Latin American Studies minor. Um, I am also a special projects coordinator for a local nonprofit. And then I do work on the side as a Spanish-English translator. Um, so my mother is a Haitian person. She's been the biggest Haitian influence in my life. And as someone born in the United States, she's definitely had to drill um, what it is to be Haitian, Haitian history into me. And especially being in this area where we don't have the highest um, or the most close-knit Haitian community. She's definitely been my rock in terms of what it means to be Haitian and how I go and emulate that into the world. Thank you. Um, my name is Bertrand Bruno. Um, I was born in D.C. I've lived in Montgomery County most of my life. Um, spent a little bit of time in D.C., but most of my life in, in Montgomery County. Um, both my parents are Haitian, um, and some of the fondest memories I have of what it is to be Haitian um, are of um, protesting in front of the embassy for Aristide. I remember being nine years old, holding a sign, not, not really understanding what it meant, but knowing that I was fighting for something. Um, my dad was a, was a very big Aristide supporter, um, and he was very uh, engaged um, in, um, in uh, 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 speaking about Haitian issues in America. Um, and that was kind of passed down to me. Problem, I don't know if it's something my mom was really into or, or involved in, but it's something that um, I got from my dad at a very young age. And growing up a Haitian American in the United States is, is, is interesting because for me, um, I stuck out like a sore thumb growing up, um, going to school, um, because you leave the home and out there is not the, the culture and the community that your parents, um, that your Haitian parents build for you at home. And so growing up was a bit of a challenge for me in school. Um, and, um, and I struggled with my Haitian American identity um, up until I didn't care. And I decided I was going to be Haitian and that's, that's that. Um, but I will say that you know it is a challenge I think for Haitians growing up in America, um, if particularly if you don't go back to Haiti. Um, I was fortunate enough to have a family that still had connections in Haiti, and we would go back. And so I've been to Haiti many, many times, um, younger and in my in my um, pre in my teen years. Um, but that that experience at a young age. 
I think helped me, helped guide me through my identity um, as a Haitian American. And so I'm a Haitian first before an American. Um, and I think that's important. Um, I work in the technology sector. I'm in the systems engineer for um, in a consulting, uh, IT consulting firm in, in uh, Maryland, in Virginia. Thank you. Yeah. Stephanie, um, you were able to hear the earlier panels, and they were, you know, and um, a generation that is ahead of you, that came before you, both in the uh, male and uh, female panels, except for one of the members who's probably of your generation. Um, how do you identify with the questions that they raised, um, the, the subjects that they discussed? Um, are they the same for you? Do, they, do you have the same issues, the same aspirations, the same challenges, and the same path as the two panels, the early panels? Or do you feel that uh, your path is different? Uh, a little bit. Um, pretty much similar, but a little bit different. I basically came here without my mother. Uh, my mother stayed in Haiti, and I moved in with my dad. So there was a lot of challenges living in here without my mom that I was really close to. And she did not come here until after college, so and that's pretty emotional. But um, the path, um, I'm, I identify myself clearly being Haiti. First, I always say Haiti, even living here in D.C., where are you from? Where did you come, move from? Haiti. They look at me, you just left Haiti and came here. And yes, that's what it was. I was working at the embassy and then I got an opportunity here in Haiti, here in D.C., while I was in the embassy in Haiti. So I came here, but um, I'm still connected to Haiti. It's um, like the man said earlier, Haiti to them is the is a mother, like when a man, man marries and they, with a different woman, but now it's the mother, they can never get, they're still connected to their mom. So to me, Haiti, I always go every year, and no matter what happens in Haiti, what society is putting, what the media is putting about Haiti, Haiti is always home to me. Um, so, question? Sure. So, the women who were sitting on the couch, so my mother was also sitting on the couch, but also one of my aunts was sitting on the couch. And so, for me, my aspirations and my goals are a little bit different because I am only 21, so I'm a little bit younger. Um, and only recently has it been about giving that same um, that same inspiration back to the younger generations and trying to encourage them and show them this is what you can do because I'm only just now figuring out what it is I can do. But when I look at them, I really just feel very thankful um, to have had these really strong influences in my life to tell me, yes, you can be that woman in STEM. And we were having this conversation earlier about um, how Haitian family drives you towards STEM, but I got the opportunity to try it and to explore it and to find out that it wasn't for me, but there wasn't anybody in my office who looked like me. And so if I didn't have that support from my family, it would have been, well, I don't want to be here because nobody here understands me. But it wasn't that, it was that I gave it my all and this wasn't my fit, and that's what let me go change my major to something else. So when I figured it out a little bit more, I aimed to be like these women who were sitting on the couch, but. Yeah. Um it's a good question, and it's one of the things that I've struggled with um, kind of growing up is how to contribute to Haiti, how to, how to not only have a connection in terms of family there, but you know, using my skill sets, how can I um, give back to a country that um, does have a positive role in my life in terms of um, the culture and, 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 and just the love for the country. Um, but me being in technology, me being in a field that um, is, I think, I think probably one of the most important tools um, for the development of any economy. Um, how do, do my specific skill sets fit? Um, and that's a struggle for me that I've always tried to figure out and I haven't found an answer to. So my um, I envy uh, the, the men and the women that sat on this couch and this chair and that chair book, um, for their ability to be able to contribute to Haiti in some fashion, um, whereas I haven't, I haven't figured that out yet. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm at the young age of 34, so I have a lot of time. And I hope that at some point I can contribute either economically or uh, in, you 
you know, I've, I thought, you know, played with the idea of maybe moving to Haiti and working there. I think um, those opportunities would be great, um, but I haven't been able to, 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 to do that yet. Stephanie, um, how do you manage to marry your Haitian um, legacy, the Haitian, um, how would I say, the, um, the customs that uh, you have inherited from the Haitian side of your upbringing with the um, American side of your you know, education and of your upbringing? How do you marry both? Uh, to my friends, I'm not even American. I just hold the passport. <laughs> but um, I am 200% Haitian. <laughs> um, but yes, growing here in school does help um, different um, um, structure. I am always in Haiti. I went back to live there for three years. And most of my family is in Haiti. Um, and like I said, I've only grew up here with my dad, so everyone else was in Haiti. So that has helped me keep my connection to Haiti. Um, but you know, at times as when things happen to Haiti, it's kind of want to draw back and stay closer to the American side. But home is home. I always find myself back to that land. Thank you. So um, it's been a little bit of a challenge, I think, especially growing up in this area. So I don't speak any Creole. So it's been even more challenging because I feel really caught in between and trying to marry everything. I feel like I'm always working overtime to like learn extra history or like go that extra mile to really find out. But it's um, a lot of it is about learning who you are and understanding what aspects of both culture that you can make work because um, even in elementary school, just how I was raised, I found myself screaming like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with these kids? Um, <laughs> Which I know is something that they kind of talked about earlier when you come to school here and I was born here so you would think that it was a much easier transition. But there were a lot of things that I was learning at home that other people just were not getting at home. Um, and a lot of values that I have, especially when it comes to college classes, attending classes, taking projects seriously, that I'm like, okay, you guys still, you're not here and that's maybe for a different reason. Um, so I think a lot of it is definitely finding out who you are and what you really value. Yeah, that's, it's a very, it's a good question, but I actually don't think it's that complex in the sense that, um, you know, being Haitian American, you have the benefit of being able to take the best of both, right? Um, and I think the, the, one of the things that's not necessarily talked about a lot is this, is this idea that when, when you understand that you're Haitian and you understand your history, you don't have a lot of the baggage. Um, that is often associated with being black in America. Mm. And so um, I think that the reason you see a lot of Haitians in America that are successful and doing well, I think is a testament to that history that we have, that pride that we have of being Haitian and the way we're brought up. Um, and so um, I think you can take the culture or, or the upbringing from, you know, you know, taking the upbringing from my parents and then taking the opportunity that's given me in the United States, um, it's really easy to marry the two. It's, it's really easy to, um, to, to, as an adult, maybe when I was younger it was difficult to be Haitian and everybody's doing their thing and I can't do those things because, you know, there's a belt waiting for me at home. But, <laughs> But as, when you get older, you start to understand that it becomes very easy to marry those, those, the, 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 the best out of both worlds. Um, and there's a reason why we have so many successful Haitians in America that are not only contributing to the economy of America, but um, also able to give back to the country in a lot of different ways. Now, we know that your generation, I don't even know whether it's X, Y, or Z, uh, but we know that your generation is a generation that looks ahead, that is a generation of doers, and that is a generation that doesn't make no for an answer, that doesn't let anything stop them. So, Stephanie, now, would you tell us, give us an idea of uh, how you envision your own future, especially in the area of, um, you know, social action, social activism. 
Um, definitely with my field on international development, I do want to give some support, get back to Haiti, and create an organization, most likely a nonprofit. For, most likely for healthcare needs, I've seen there's so many organizations and everything in Haiti, everyone thinks they're going to save it. And not all the time that humanitarian saves Haiti, but I can tell the healthcare system definitely helps. When I worked there, the hospital was mainly providing um, wound care for people who were affected by the um, earthquake and as well as uh, prosthetic legs and arms. And that made a difference because they had nowhere else to go. And the, me, myself, I currently have um, family members who are diabetes. And, it, it, Haiti doesn't have that capacity at all. People die from it all the time. And my point is at some point to connect with uh, the work in, there's a hospital in Mia Valley right now, so I mean, last day they're doing an extremely great work. And I think other areas of Haiti I need with that. So I'm thinking of starting small in my mom's town in Porapima. So that's my type of contribution. I'm hoping for the future uh, to learn all the, everything I have now with, from work to go and apply it by creating that organization. Yeah, I know you're very young, that you're only <laughs> starting, but uh, I'm sure that you have already uh, mapped out your future, so do you share with us? Yeah, well, we know everything goes according to plan, right? <laughs> um, so uh, step one for me is definitely finishing school. Like I said, I'm a public policy major, and I have interest in um, community development and urban planning, and I'm a Latin American studies minor, and I kind of picked that up because you don't get to learn a lot about the Caribbean and Latin America in um, traditional schooling like K through 12 in the US and so I took those classes so that I would be able to take the college level courses that would teach me a little bit at least introductory stuff about the Caribbean um, the government structures the history of the government so that when I establish myself here and I know what I need to know about community development about urban planning I'm able to take it overseas and I have those language skills and um, those professional skills as well so that's my plan yeah, yeah, I mean, for me, being in the technology industry, um, it's hard to think about how you contribute socially using your skill set or your interest in, you know, the, using the tech industry. But I do think, um, you know, um, I am involved in, you know, social issues in the United States. And I do find that a lot of the social issues in the United States, um, you know, a lot of people in Haiti share the same concerns. I mean, healthcare is a concern across all around the world, and healthcare is a big issue in the states. And so, um, I feel like there's a lot of synergy in a lot of areas. And for me, um, I think the United States does play a role in setting the example, and for particularly for the Western Hemisphere. So I do feel like if we do, you know, implement some social change in this country. Um, that maybe that can um, influence other countries in our hemisphere to make s certain adjustments as well. So that's in terms of universal health care, um, an economy that works for working class people as well as um, people in the middle class and upper class. Um, I think it's important that um, the United States, United States sets an example um, for countries in this hemisphere on how you should govern. But I don't have any specific social goals that I'm working on. Thank you, Beata. And um, we talked earlier about statistics of uh, Haitian American organizations that exist in the DMV area. Um, Stephanie, do you belong to a some any organization? Um, yes, I do. I am involved with HP, the Association of Haitian Professionals of the area. That's where I find home, <laughs> and, and as well as the embassy, to have a lot of activities. Um, that brings Haitians and non-Haitians as well, bringing the changing the narrative of Haiti, which I really like the work that uh, Ambassador Altador was doing, and hopefully continues. Um, and I volunteer at um, these events. Thank you, and Sophia. Okay. So we said earlier, I'm a little bit younger, so I'm not quite there yet. But so far, I've mainly just been doing volunteering, and I've had the opportunity to volunteer some at the embassy and to volunteer for a couple of HRA events. But other than that, I'm just into the water. Um, not, not much engagement in the Haitian community in terms of events, um, but um, you know it's something I will be you know, engaging more in in the future. The Young Professionals, um, uh, Haitian Young Professionals organization I want to engage in. 
um, some more embassy events. I haven't done many in, uh, in, in, in the near future. In the, it's been a while. So, um, but I, I think, I think um, there are a lot of young Haitians that are not as engaged, I think, in the Haitian community. I think there's a lot of Haitians that are hidden. Yes. As you said, <laughs> so there's a lot of hidden Haitians in the, in, in the D.C. area, a lot. Um, and I think that's more of a function of not necessarily Haitians that don't want to engage, but Haitians that just don't know. Um, a lot, I, I've run into so many Haitians that have, um, you know, when you grow up and you, you create your friend circles, um, you know, you're very, you kind of isolate yourself and you may not branch out and look for um, people that have the same upbringing that you, you do. And I found that. Um, simply hanging out with some of my cousins, I've met other young professionals in, in D.C. And I think there's a lot more Haitians in D.C. than, than we really understand. And the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia area, I would say, the DMV. Um, so there's like a hidden contingent of Haitians, definitely. Um. Thank you, Bertrand. Um, I will will I would ask each one of you to look into the camera. Since you are so young and you have so much ahead of you, you've already accomplished a lot and you have a lot uh, ahead of you to accomplish. And uh, there are definitely other, we know there are lots of them that are not as privileged as the three of you are sitting here, who are struggling with identity, with racism, with discrimination, with finding their path, not knowing who they are, what they are, when they're going. So I'll ask each one of you in turn to look into the camera and send a message to the ones who are doing well, to encourage them to do better, and also to the ones that have doubts, that have, that have issues, what kind of message would you like to send to a young person watching you right now? Um, Stephanie? Sure. Um, I'd like to let you know that the road is not easy. Uh, and to get to success, you must take steps. You don't always just reach to the highest step. It's little by little. And it's OK to fail in between the process, as long as you have your plan and reach for that. And it's always good to seek for a mentor and wish you good luck with everything. Thank you. So I'd like to start off by saying congratulations, um, because I know a lot of people don't always feel like they get that congratulations and that support, but there is always support around. And um, we come from a line of very strong people, so don't forget that it's literally in you to do well and to make it far and you will. Um. I would say, I would say, um, I think it's important that you take the opportunities um, that are given to you, and not necessarily opportunities that are handed to you, but um, be able to recognize an opportunity and, and take that risk um, because you are young, and so you are allowed to make mistakes when you're young, um, and some of those decisions you make uh, will open up more doors. And biggest piece of advice I can give you is never burn your bridges. Um, you never know when a former coworker, a former manager, a former employer may call you back. And so always um, work with um, honesty um, and hard work ethic um, and uh, don't hold back. <coughs> uh, we earlier also, a question was asked of um, how many people around here are in politics. How many of our you know, fellow Haitian Americans are in politics? Yes, it was said that, yeah, there are people who are involved who are helping design right policies. But um, among the three of you, is there any idea in the back of your head that maybe you will want to be uh, running for something to change um, current policies and politics? To me, as of now, no. I think so. You think so? I do, I think so. And um, would you like to share what um, ideas you have? Uh, you don't have to tell us everything because, you know, you have to keep some, some things to yourselves. Yeah, sure. But, um, you know, how you project it. So I won't give away, you know, all my secrets. Um, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I have the blessing right now to work for an organization that um, is a nonprofit organization, but they do a lot of work around equity and breaking down barriers. Um, and so without giving a little bit too much away about what they do, they really taught me about um, why diversity is important, like farther than you can imagine as a person of color, but why diversity is really necessary and how you 
actually get diverse people at the table and it comes down to searching for kids, talking to counselors, buying plane tickets, getting hotels, getting chaperones. And so now that I've been able to see this and I understand that there's a lot of corporations, a lot of companies, a lot of nonprofits out here not doing this, I don't see any reason that maybe our government or our schools couldn't have a better role in doing this as well. And um, I know a lot of times they say they want diversity, but then they don't go out and find it. And so that would be my main focus. Definitely a large portion of my platform is how to enact equity in admissions, in um, professional environments. So that's my tentative plan. Thank you. Um, I, I love politics. I love talking about politics. Uh, I love talking about controversial issues. Um, as far as flirting with getting into politics, um, you know, I've, that's something I've thought about, um, whether it's local level or, or, or other. Um, but I don't know if I'm at the point in my life to get into politics, um, but I do enjoy a good conversation around it. Um, and I think I'd have to do a lot of you know, transitioning from the tech industry into politics, I'd have to do a lot of, um, you know, groundwork, I think, from a local level to get up to maybe, you know, Congress, whatever that might be, um, and uh, before that would happen, but um, you never know. Thank you. Thank you. How about entrepreneurship? Tell us about entrepreneurship. Definitely, I'm seeking that. I think I'm at the transition part of career. I've done, um, as much as we want humanitarian to save the world, it doesn't seem like it will always you know, save the world. So in terms of entrepreneurship, I've been looking a lot into real estate, and uh, I am just doing a lot more research to see which side of it shall I get into. And I really like it. That's become my hobby in my time, my free time. No, okay. I'm just learning right now. It's funny, in, in, in my circles, um, we always talk about, hey, we need to start our own firm, we need to start our own business, we need to get out from, you know, um, such and such company and do our own thing. Um, we can work for the government and, you know, they promote small business. Um, so it's always a running theme about taking your skill set and seeing what you can do with it. Um, so, um, yeah, something I've thought about. Um, and then, you know, from, from there, you can really do anything. It's a springboard to a lot of things, so. What have you learned from the generations that have come before you? Uh, what kind of message would you like to send to, as you can see here, those are the generations of your moms and uncles. Oh, what kind of message would you like to send to the other generations? Terms of any, anything, anything you would like to say to the, you know, generation that came before you, the old my student loans. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, please. Um, I and like we were saying earlier, we have the culture brings the strong personality into us, and um, us here as immigrants, we come here with a plan, with the educating the perfect education, but I do think that um, sometimes. We need to learn to broaden, to allow the, your kids to broaden into the careers that they choose to do, not only the doctors, lawyers, engineers, um, as I myself wasn't one. And when I was studying business in undergrad, people were calling my mom saying she would never get a job and that you should tell her to switch to nursing. And um, now here I am 10 years later, I'm still working, I'm still using that business degree with an MPA working, and I'm not a doctor, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a lawyer. And I just think right now things are changing. Even people who have my degree, they're leaving it and they're doing stuff on social media, making three times the money I'm getting and paying off that student loan in a year that I'm still trying to see how do I do mine. There's a whole lot more other branches of careers, and I think we need to be a little bit more open-minded that being a chef is okay. It's not um, the bone in the cuisine. So um, I just think that's what the generation, that's one message that I have, but yeah. that's just my idea. Well, good to hear. We still have a few more minutes. 
That's all. Thank you very much, Stephanie. That was very interesting. Sophia? I don't know how I follow that. <laughs> I think she hit that. She hit it right on there. <laughs> you have your own experience, so you I can do. share with us. Um, I think I only to not, you know, follow right yeah. after. I definitely. I think we all um, I've learned a lot, so thank you. Um, and I would invite more conversation, for sure. I think that my generation is definitely, like, we can go on Instagram, like, kind of off of your point, we can go on Instagram, we can go do our own thing, we can do anything, but that doesn't mean we don't still need um, guidance or advice, for sure. And I think that there is definitely a disconnect where you guys have a lot of knowledge and you've already done it. So I welcome advice, and I think all of us do, if you can just continue sharing that wisdom with us, for sure. Yeah, I would say uh, you were right. <laughs> Most of the time. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, but I think the, the theme here is that um, technology has widened um, the, uh, the occupations available for success for, for my generation. Um, and so the doctor, engineer, lawyer, you know, mantra is not the only, you know, uh, 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 potentially successful path um, for prestige and for success. Um, very important fields, ones that will always be there forever. But um, a recognition that today's economy um, is one that has a wide variety of opportunities to make a living. Um, and that it's not necessarily um, the amount of money that you make, but your just ability to provide for yourself and your family that's important. And so I think, you know, my mom used to tell me, you know why I wanted you to become a doctor, engineer, and lawyer so much? And I said, why? Why did you want to? She says, because I knew if I didn't push you that hard, you'd become a janitor. <laughs> and while I don't agree, She's probably right, and I think part of being Haitian is that push from our parents, that push from um, a generation that knew that you needed to work hard, you needed to take this opportunity. You're here in the United States, you know, you don't have, not everybody has this opportunity, and you need to strive for the, for, for the mountaintops. Um, and so I think, um, I would thank, thank, thank you all for that. Thank, thank, uh, thank my parents and all my influences for that. Um, but there's more. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, going forward, um, what kind of commitment are you ready and willing to make, um, both here and wherever you plant your tent? You know, life may take you somewhere else. What kind of a commitment are you making in terms of, uh, you know, leaving your mark, leaving your something? you know, a legacy, leaving a mark, wherever you are, because I mean, your life will take you places. Stephanie. Uh, I would say, I guess, as I spoke earlier about the plan that I have for the future, one day the uh, small clinic related healthcare needs for the community. Uh, since that's a big problem we have, stay humble. <laughs> Thank you. Sophia. Um, for me, it's kind of back to my politician's plan, but it's definitely, I want to leave that mark of equity, for sure. Um, I may because I take a lot of ethics classes, but I think that is the best way to move forward. I think that's the best way to make actual improvement instead of temporary improvement. I talk to my mom all the time about um, her generation versus my generation and what they did, and they have done it first, and it seems as though the trends um, for her graduating classes were that people of color were just doing better. They were graduating with more doctors, they were graduating with more lawyers, and for some reason that just came back down and I really do believe it's because of temporary fixes and programs that they seemed like solutions but they weren't long term. And so in whatever job I get, wherever I go, because I am hoping that my job takes me somewhere, anyway, you know, um, that's what I want to do. I want to make long term fixes and real, real solutions. Yeah, I mean, um, as far as the legacy, my legacy, I I feel like I still have some time to figure that out. Um, but I think my role today is to be an advocate for young Haitian Americans in technology. I think, you know, it's funny, to this day, 
I do a lot of work remotely on the projects that I work on, and then when people find out that I'm black, let alone Haitian, they're surprised. And so I feel like there's still a lot of stigma out there for young Haitian, young black professionals, let alone Haitian professionals in technology. Um, I find myself the you know only minority in the room, um, and and so just. Um, for me, what, how I handle it is I just um, proceed through my, my work as I would normally, and I don't even acknowledge um, those types of, you know, the stigmas or, 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 or surprise looks. Um, I don't even acknowledge them. I just behave like I've already been here the whole time, and, and I'm just, you know, just as, you know, I'm, I'm a part of the team. Um, and you know it, it is a little bit discouraging that that still happens, but um, that that is our history as black people uh, in the Western Hemisphere and as Asians, and that's just something we have to continue to just move forward on um, before, uh, so that in my mind I feel like it's an issue of experience. Um, I think people are just not exposed to. Um, to these types of, to, to people of different colors and races and, 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 and ethnicities, ethnicities. And so I treat it as that. I, I am exposing you to, um, you know, how Haitians really are. Um, we're respectful, we're kind, we're hardworking. Um, that's what's important. Um, you know, what you heard on TV, that's not what we are. Um, so I think that's important from an advocacy perspective on how I can contribute. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you. And last question, Stephanie. What are you proudest of? Anything? I, I made it. <laughs> okay. Um, it, it, life was really a challenge here as a teen here growing up uh, with no mom and living with different households normally just not help um, you to accomplish stuff, stuff at times. I've moved around about 10 times between different family homes, and some of them have said that I would never make it to anything. So I did it. And I encourage you to believe in yourself, um, even when others say that you will not make it. Just keep fighting, and you'll get there. Sophia, what are you proudest of? What's your proudest moment? My proudest moments. Um, my proudest moments will be graduating in <laughs> next year in 2020 in spring because I will do it and it's just every day I go to class. But that's gonna be when I get my diploma and that's in my hands. That's it. I'm already ready right now. Thank you very much, Yo. What are you proudest of? Uh, I think my proudest moment um, was. Uh, eight years ago now, nine years ago, um, I uh, uh, put together a, or worked with a team at my, at a previous employer to raise, I believe it was $20,000 or $10,000 for relief for, for the earthquake, um, and we, uh, we worked pretty hard in getting um, employees from our entire uh, company from Germany to Asia to the United States um, to donate, and the company, uh, the um, um, my employer matched donations um, for us to to send money to um, two organizations in Haiti, uh, Habitat for Humanity, um, and um, and the Lumbee Fund. Um, so this was this was many years ago, but I think it was probably my proudest achievement is that I could do something if it if if it was just money, just something. Um, for those affected by the earthquake. And with this last statement by our three wonderful panelists, Stéphanie Bonbon, Sophia Fenton, Bertrand Bruno, we conclude our panel of young Haitian Americans of the DMV area. Thank you very much for oh, watching. <laughs>
Too afraid to dream out loud And though it's said for your idea It won't make sense to everybody And you need couch If you want to persevere To fulfill divine purpose You gotta answer when you're called so don't be afraid to face the world against the odds. Keep the dream alive, don't let it die. If something deep inside keeps inspiring you to try, don't stop and never give up. Don't ever give up on you. Don't give up. Every victory comes in time. Work today to change tomorrow. It gets easier. Was to say that you can't fly. Every step you take, you get closer to your destination. You can't feel it now, but you know you're almost there. To fulfill divine purpose, you gotta answer when you're called. So don't be afraid to face the world against the odds. Keep the dream alive, don't let it die. If something deep inside keeps inspiring you to try, don't stop and never give up. Don't ever give up on you Sometimes life can place a strong leap block in your way But you gotta keep the faith Looking deep inside your heart The light And never give up Don't ever give up on you don't give all the pieces to complete the puzzle. The answer that can solve the mystery. Yeah. The key that can lock your understanding. It's all inside of you. You have everything you need So Keep the dream alive Don't let it die If something deep inside Keeps expelling you To try Don't stop And never give up Don't ever give up On you Sometimes you can place a short block in your way, but you gotta keep your faith. Look at deep inside your heart, yeah, your heart lies. Don't ever give up, don't ever give up on you. No, 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 don't give up. No, no.